Hello. Luke 23. This is New Testament video 233, Luke lesson 76. Luke 23. 13. Heavenly Father, We know that you will teach us through your words, provided we are willing to hear them. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you. Luke 23, 13. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. 15. No, nor yet Herod. For I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. For of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! And he said unto them the third time, Why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will. Turn back to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27, verse 15. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus which is called Christ? They all say unto him, let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and, and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, 
His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him, and took the reed, and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him, and put his own raiment on him, and led him away to crucify him. Mark, Mark 15, turn to the companion in Mark, Mark 15, Mark 15, verse 6. Now at that feast he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude, crying aloud, began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. But the chief priests moved the people, that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, what will ye then that I shall do unto him, whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why? What evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them, and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers, 16, led him away into the hall called Praetorium. And they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him. And bowing their knees, worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. John, John, John 18, John 18, verse 39. You go back to 38. And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all, but ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. 19, chapter 19, John 19, 1. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again, and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man! When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate, therefore, heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate 
unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour, that's 6 a.m. in the morning. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king! But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. Over to Luke again. This is the third and final trial of Christ Jesus. He has gone before Annas, former high priest. Next, before Caiaphas, current high priest. Finally, all the Sanhedrin. Jewish Supreme Court. That's the Jewish trial. That is the religious trial of Christ. Now the secular, Gentile, Roman trial has concluded. First he went to Pilate, Pontius Pilate, governor of Judea. Roman governor of Judea. Pilate sent him to King Herod Antipas of Galilee. Finally, Herod sends him back to Pilate. Pilate sentences him to death here. You read that? In our last study, we saw the first appearance of Jesus before Pilate, Pilate sending him to Herod Antipas, and now Herod Antipas has sent him back to Pilate. It's Thursday, Thursday morning, Thursday morning, just before 6 a.m., John gives us the time there. Sixth hour, that's Gentile Roman time. Sixth hour. Six hours from midnight. And like I had told you, the Lord Jesus was arrested around midnight. I estimate the denials, Peter denying him, that was between midnight and 3 a.m. Here we are, it's not quite 6 a.m. yet. He comes back to Pilate, this is the second time. Verse 13. Luke 23, 13. And Pilate, when he had gathered together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. See verse 2. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ the King. That was the first time before Pilate. 
Now back before pilot, the second time, 14, Luke 23, 14, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people. And behold, I having examined him before you, I have scrutinized him. I've considered the matter. I've talked with him. I've heard your accusations against him. Luke 23, 14. Behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault, no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. 15. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him. I have sent you to Herod. And lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I found no fault in this man, Jesus of Nazareth. I sent him to Herod. Herod didn't find anything wrong with him. Otherwise, Herod would have put him to death. And now, you're back before me. Verse 16. I will therefore chastise him and release him. 17, the parenthetical statement. Luke 23, 17. For of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate is still desperately trying to evade responsibility here. He knows that the Lord Jesus is innocent. Repeatedly, he states that, I find no fault in this man. Even Judas Iscariot said that Jesus was the innocent blood, Matthew 27. Pilate knows this is an innocent man before him. I don't want to put him to death. Oh, he's a Galilean, is he? Isn't he? Is he? I'll send him, defer him, defer you over to Herod Antipas. And Herod, king of Galilee, he can deal with this matter. Well, Herod didn't handle the matter to the point of death, did he? No, he didn't. Which means Pilate has not escaped the duty here of putting Jesus to death. Pilate is pressured once again. Pilate was certainly disappointed to see Herod not settling the matter. He's back here? You're back here with him? The pressure is on Pilate to give apostate Israel their way, what they want. Now, like I told you in our prior study, from secular history, Roman history, Jewish history, not in the Bible, Pilate and Israel were at odds a lot. We can see a hint of this in Luke 
chapter 13. Luke 13, 1, remember this? There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. No details are provided there other than Pontius Pilate had slaughtered some Galileans while they were offering sacrifices in the Jerusalem temple. Well, Israel didn't like Pilate. Okay, that's understandable. Luke 23:17. For of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. Remember, it's Passover. Pilate wants to get on good terms with Israel. He has been governor or prefect of Judea, the area around Jerusalem, for approximately five years. He will hold that office for about five more years after Calvary before he is overthrown exiled and takes his own life. Pilate has a custom, a habit. Every Passover, every feast there, he releases a prisoner to Israel uh, to pacify Israel, flatter Israel. See, I did something For you. Now, can I have your favor? Political corruption. <laughs> Releasing a prisoner? That person should be in prison or in the cemetery, and you release him? Well, Pilate was scoring political points with Israel. And how convenient for him. They bring Jesus here. Pilate knows Jesus is innocent. Pilate has been squirming, so to speak. What do I do? And he dodges responsibility. Let Herod handle this. No, Herod didn't handle it. He's back before me. There's another way I can escape this. This time of year, I release a prisoner to the Jews. So rather than kill innocent Jesus of Nazareth, I will chastise him. I'll punish him, scourging. Then I will release him to Israel. And that way, I don't have to put him to death. Pilate is strategizing again. What can I do to get out of this? I will chastise him, 16, and release him. 17, for of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. He must release one. Of necessity he must release one. Because if he doesn't, oh, Israel will not be pleased with him. Verse 18, Luke 23, 18. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man! and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city, and for murder was cast into prison. Hmm. What an upstanding citizen Barabbas is. A pillar of the community. Hmm. For a certain sedition made in the city, 
and for murder. Hmm. He's a seditionist. He's a murderer. Barabbas is guilty of an uprising here, defying the government. An insurrectionist. He defies authority made in the city, Jerusalem, and for murder was cast into prison. He murdered during this uprising. Oh, Israel refuses the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't want him. Get him out of here. Don't want him. Don't release him to us. But Barabbas, the murderer, the robber, John calls him, the insurrectionist, the seditionist, give him to us. Release him. What's wrong with these people? Jesus isn't a robber. He's not a murderer, a seditionist, an insurrectionist. Put him in prison. Discipline him. Crucify him. Then we have Barabbas, the fine man that he is. Seditionist, insurrectionist, robber, murderer. We want him loose. This is spiritual lunacy. This is spiritual blindness. This is what Israel wants. This is what apostate, unbelieving, ungrateful for God's word. Israel wants this. Verse 20. Luke 23, 20. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus. See that? Pilate still isn't comfortable with letting Jesus die as an innocent man. I, I, I can't do this. Put him to death. He's innocent. So Pilate tries to reason once more with Israel. 20. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. 22, And he said unto them, The third, another opportunity for Israel to make a wise decision here. It's be a poor one. 22, and he said unto them a third time, Why, what evil have he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. Pilate wants to let the Lord Jesus Christ go free. 23, Luke 23, 23, and they were instant. They demand this. They urge him. They're insistent with loud voices. They're shouting. They're yelling, requiring that he might be crucified. See, the Jews are hell bent on this. They've made their choice. And they're going through with this to the end. Calvary is not an accident. This is deliberate. This is intentional. This isn't faith. This is unbelief. It's not, let's crucify him as the sinless sacrifice for our sins. No, it's let's crucify him so he won't reign over us. That's it. That's it. Twenty-three. 
23, 23, Luke. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevail. I remind you again, who are the people requiring Jesus be crucified there? Who are those people? Are they those who cry out, there's no God? We don't believe the Bible. We don't study the Bible. We don't copy the Bible. Is it the harlots? Is it the tax collectors, the publicans? Who are they? Twenty-three, twenty-three, Luke, and the voices of them and of the chief priests, priests prevail. We want our way. Isn't that pathetic? Look at Mark fifteen, eleven. But the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. Oh. How about verse 10? For he, Pilate, knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. That's not in Luke. Mark reports to us Pilate understands what's going on here. Pontius Pilate is a pagan. He's a Roman. He doesn't have the Hebrew Bible. He doesn't know Israel's God. But here, this man can see this Jesus in my court there's no fault in him they claim that he perverts their nation that he makes himself a king and that he's a threat to Caesar and so on but I don't see that Pilate says no He's innocent of those accusations you bring before me here. Why have they brought Jesus of Nazareth to me? Pilate, he knows the truth. The chief priests have brought Jesus to me because they are envious of Jesus. Jesus is a teacher among the people. And the chief priests want the attention for themselves. He's taking over our nation. This is our religion. This is our temple. What right does this Jesus of Nazareth have to come in here and take charge of what we have running See that sin? Sin. I, I, me, 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 me. It isn't their nation. It's his. It's his father's nation. The temple should be his house, his father's house. It isn't. It isn't. Okay. We have some usurpers here. These men in leadership, the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood, it stained, stained, tarnished. It's the priests leading the unbelief in the nation. Remember if you find a nation that's corrupt, you find a family that's corrupt, 
You find a local church that's corrupt. You find a world that's corrupt. Hmm. No difficulty there. Look to the leadership. The leadership is corrupt first. Why is Israel in unbelief? I will take a wild guess and say that its leadership is in unbelief. And that unbelief has disseminated through that teaching, that false teaching in the temple, that the chief priests and the scribes and the elders have been perpetuating here for centuries. This isn't God's nation. This is Satan's nation. All corrupted, polluted, defiled. They don't think like my father. They think like their father, the devil. Pilate can see this. See, remember, my friend, remember, the Bible will profit us absolutely nothing if we don't believe it in our heart. So, I remind you once more, to hold a Bible is not enough. To open the Bible and read, that's not enough. To open the Bible and copy it, that isn't enough. To listen to someone read the Bible, that's not enough. We must open the Bible, read, study, and believe in our heart, not just the head, not just the head, the heart. Trusting that word. That word is right, and I'm wrong if I disagree with it. That's the position of faith. Israel isn't there. They don't want to be there. They've copied the Bible. They've heard the Bible. They've read the Bible. Synagogue services. Every Sabbath. Every Saturday. Every weekend. They've observed these feasts for years and years and years. Going all the way back to Moses. 15 centuries. And it was religious busyness. Just going through the motions. No spiritual perception. Because that's what they want. They want darkness. See? They'll be religious. But they won't be people of faith. They'll worship their religion. But they won't use that religion to worship the God who gave them that religion. Now... Look at, look, at, look at how the unbelief is reaching its apex just moments away now. The cross, the crucifixion. Hmm. Pilate, he recognizes th this isn't, this isn't about any of those accusations you bring him here for. No, it's because of envy. Because of envy. You want him out of the way. You want to take his place. Or rather, you don't want him to take your place. We're in charge in this nation. We don't need this Jesus of Nazareth. We know everything there is to know about religion and the Bible. How dare he come and tell us anything? The people listen to him instead of listen to, listening to us. Mm, that's the attitude. Pilate sees that. Go over to Matthew. Matthew confirms it. Matthew 27, 18. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Mm -hmm. Now, who's leading 
Israel to demand Jesus be crucified. It's the chief priests, chief priests. Mark 15, 11, but the chief priests moved the people, the blind leaders of the blind. It has been asked, how could, on Palm Sunday, Israel celebrate the crowds, the multitudes, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Look, he's our king. How could Israel go from that on Sunday to this on Thursday? Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. He's not our king. For one thing, The chief priests influenced them to say what they did Thursday now. The chief priests moved the people. They antagonized the people. They made their minds ill toward Jesus. These are the Bible scholars, Bible scholars, huh? Bible teachers. Where do we find opponents of the truth? In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or anywhere in the Bible. The scholars, the scholars. Where do we find false teaching and opposition to God's word and will today? Uh, scholarship, surprise, surprise. You go to the average seminary, Bible college, quote, Christian university. <laughs> You'll find plenty of people teaching there. When you talk to them personally, I have okay, talked to the people who graduate from those institutions, quote, Christian institutions. They believe the scriptures to the degree the atheists and the agnostics do. Try it and see. Try it and see. There is so much Bible correction in seminary, in Bible college, in Christian university. But, oh, how they love the Bible. They love the scriptures. We love the Lord. You do. Why do you mutilate his word? We believe the scriptures, you do. How about this verse? No, I don't believe that. That's not in the oldest manuscripts. That reading is doubtful. That word's wrong. This is wrong. That doesn't belong. Mistranslation, poor translation. <laughs> Those very people will then go out to the lost world around us and scream, you don't believe the Bible. How dare you attack Christians? <laughs> and yet it's the so-called Christians who are attacking the Bible many times. They love their traditions, their rites, their rituals, their ceremonies, and they will take those long before they'll take the scriptures. You can have that Bible. My church doesn't believe that. We follow tradition. I don't follow the Bible. I follow tradition. Good for you, my friend. If that's where you are and that's what you want, go for it. Let's see where it gets you. I say this advisedly. It will get you nowhere in eternity. But try it and see if you doubt. Or we can take the position of faith. The Bible is right, period. In English, the King James Bible is right, period. That's the position of faith. 
We aren't looking to appeal to scholars and man's intellect. First Corinthians chapters 1, 2, and 3. The wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Matthew, back to Matthew 27. Matthew 27, 15. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had been a notable prisoner. Oh, he's exceptional. He's noteworthy, notable. He's exceptional. Pilate gave them a choice there, 17. Whom will ye that I release unto you? Barabbas? You want Barabbas? The notable prisoner? Yeah, we'll take him. Or Jesus, which is called Christ. Oh no, don't want him. For he knew that for envy, they had delivered him. Look at 19, Matthew 27, 19, special to Matthew. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? Pilate's wife. She bears testimony, Jesus of Nazareth is just. He's righteous. He's innocent. Pilate, leave the man be. Don't do anything to harm him. Matthew 27, 19. For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Before the Bible was completed there, in the first century, here is an example of a dream. Apparently God gave Pilate's wife this dream. I've suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Leave him be. Leave him alone. Don't sentence him to death. I have a terrible feeling about this. Get out of it, Pilate. Pilate's wife sees nothing wrong with Jesus of Nazareth. Pilate sees nothing wrong with Jesus of Nazareth. But Israel does. Oh, and what an indictment. What an indictment. The people who have the Bible lack, and it's their own fault, they lack spiritual insight that the Bible would have given them had they wanted it. It's not an evidence problem, it's a heart problem. Israel should have been watching Jesus from the moment he came into Jerusalem. Actually, the last 33 years, but especially these last three or four days here. Sunday he entered Jerusalem, and he'd come every day back to Jerusalem. He'd spend the night in Bethany, remember. They should have watched him in faith every day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. He came, I'll be 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, now it's 14th. Passover is tonight. I'll be 14th in the morning, morning hours. Messiah will be cut off shortly. Executed. Not in faith and doubt, in unbelief. They watched him all through since Sunday. And they found fault with him every day. They opposed him. They said something negative about him. And now, during his trials, they continue finding fault with him. But Pilate, a Roman, not a Bible owner. Pilate, a pagan. And Pilate's wife, a pagan. Heathen. These, these idolatrous people, <laughs> even they see Jesus.
Moses is innocent. But Israel, we're not like everyone else. We're not like the Gentiles. You aren't. No, you're worse. Israel possesses the Messianic prophecies in their Hebrew Bible. They don't believe any of it. None of it. So you ask the Bible holders, is Jesus innocent? Israel possessing the Hebrew Bible? No, he's not innocent. He's guilty. Pilate, who doesn't possess the Hebrew Bible, you ask Pilate, Pilate, is he innocent? Is Jesus innocent? Yes. Pilate says yes. And Pilate doesn't have a Bible. <laughs> oh. Pitiful. Matthew 27, 19 have nothing to do with that just man. Eh? Verse 20, Matthew 27, 20, But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The chief priests and the elders, the leaders, are guiding the nation into unbelief here. Desire Barabbas. Get Pilate to release Barabbas. Destroy Jesus. Get him out of the way. The governor answered and said unto them, Matthew 27, 21, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas! Eh? No delay there. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? They don't answer, huh? See, they know. They know he's innocent. But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail, nothing. Matthew 27, 24. But that rather a tumult was made. He took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. So Pilate, seeking to ease his conscience, takes a basin of water and he washes his hands. He says, I'm innocent of the blood of this just person. I'm not guilty here. And Pilate washes his hands before all of them. Just so you know. Don't blame me for Jesus' death. I'm innocent. 25, Matthew 27, 25. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. By the way, Pilate was guilty. God wasn't moved here. Pilate is a free moral agent. Volition. Free will. Even though Pilate washed his hands, in Father God's mind, Pilate, you're guilty. You aren't cleansed just because you wash your hands. Matthew 27, 25. All the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Israel declares in front of Pilate, We take full responsibility of Jesus being crucified. We'll take the blame for this. The Jews, no question about it, the Jews freely admitted this. 
His blood be on us and on our children. We'll pass the blame to our children too. We're guilty. We've put our Messiah to death. No shame here. You can blame us for Jesus being crucified. Oh, let's try this one and see. Months later, months later, in Acts chapter 5, Acts 5, verse 24, Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. How the apostles had escaped. Prison. Acts 5, 25. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. Oh, that sounds like back when Jesus was in the temple months earlier before they crucified him. These troublemakers, just like their Messiah was here months earlier causing division. Now his apostles, these nuts are here teaching that same old doctrine that he used to Still no faith, huh? Israel is still in unbelief, even after the cross. And when they had brought them, Acts 5, 27, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, this is Caiaphas, saying, did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us? Oh, All these months now, the apostles have been preaching in Jerusalem. The kingdom doctrine there. And they intend to bring this man's blood upon us. <laughs> See, the apostles were accusing Israel of killing Messiah. Now, at the Trial before Pilate there. Yes, we are guilty of killing Messiah. We'll take responsibility. Now, all these months have passed. Acts 5 now. You're blaming us for Jesus' death. Hmm. Oh, but you were so willing to take the blame earlier. The talk is cheap. They were convicted. No, his blood will not be upon us. We know we said it before his blood would be upon us. That was just empty chatter. See? <laughs> That's worthless religion for you, my friend. How religious they are. How pious, how devout, and still perverted. Political corruption is nothing new. Religious defilement, that's nothing new either. Pilate knows this man is innocent. I'll wash my hands to show you I'm free of this man's blood. His blood be upon us, the people say. Matthew 27, 25. 26, Matthew 27, 26, Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Look at this mistreatment here. It's not in Luke, but we can read it here in Matthew. Matthew 27, 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus 
into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe, making fun of him. Making fun of him. You're a king? Yeah, a scarlet robe. Scarlet robe. The outer cloak of a Roman soldier, actually. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Look, we'll give you a crown. We'll give you the scarlet robe there. We'll give you a reed, a flimsy plant. Here's your scepter, your rod of authority. And they bow before him. Hail, King of the Jews. Hmm. The soldiers, the Roman soldiers, and they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. It's Matthew's account. Back to Mark. We'll reread Mark. Matthew and Mark furnish us with data not in Luke. And we'll go to John as well. Mark 15. Mark 15. 12. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why, what evil hath he done? And they cried out, The more exceedingly crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, he wanted to score political points. He doesn't want to offend Israel. Because if he does, he will have to stand before the emperor and give an account. The Jews had complained to Caesar before about Pilate. So Pilate, he's cautious about how he proceeds with this. He's willing to content the people, even if this is wrong, and Pilate knows this is wrong, this is illegal. Putting an innocent man to death here, punishing him, this is unlawful. But if I don't do something to please the Jews, then they will report me to Rome. And I'll have to stand before the emperor. I'll lose my office. I can't do that. Pilate has no integrity either. They're all in one bunch. They're all lost. And content to be so. Apostate Israel and heathen Gentiles alike. None of us want Jesus over us. He's not our king, Psalm 2. Mark 15, 15, And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium. And they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple and planted a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. The crown of thorns again, as in Matthew, so in Mark. Luke doesn't have that. 
John has it. Mark 15. Mark 15, 17. The purple there. They clothed him with purple. Matthew has scarlet. The color scarlet. Like a blood red. Mark 15, purple. John 19, John 19, 5. Jesus was wearing the purple robe. So, Mark, purple. John, purple. Matthew, scarlet. Which is in contradiction. No. What if it was a faded scarlet that resembled purple? It was a faded red. Looked like purple. No contradiction. Faded scarlet would look like a purple. The cloak of a Roman soldier. They spit on him. They give him a crown of thorns. They force it on his head. He bears the curse of sin. Genesis 3. Galatians 3, the curse of the law. They force the crown of thorns on his head. He will be made sin for us. So they torture him with the crown of thorns and they hit him on the head with the reed, they spit on him, they bow their knees, they worship him. It's all insincere. No faith in any of that either. They scourged him. Scourging involved taking leather straps with little pieces of glass, metal, bone attached to them, and striking the person's front and back. Chunks of skin would be ripped away, tissue torn away from the body, even into the muscle. Those glass and bits of metal and bone would reach and rip flesh away. After they beat Jesus with those leather straps. They put his clothes on him. 28, Matthew 27, 28. Then they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. So while his wounds were healing with the cloth around him, they removed his clothes meaning they aggravated the wounds that were healing there, the scabs, I don't want to get too graphic, the, the scabbing over of those wounds, the drawing of those wounds into the cloth. Well, when they removed his clothes, they stripped his clothes to put a scarlet robe on him, they peeled off the scab, one huge mass or whatever, if you want to call it that, they peeled off the scabs as they would remove his clothing. Then they put the robe on him, the scarlet robe. Then they took that off of him, further aggravating the wounds on his chest and back. And then they put his own clothes on him again. And then when they crucify him, they remove his clothes again. The torture that he's experiencing here. Mm. They're spitting on him. They're hitting on him. No justice here either. Nope. And if you come to... Let's see. If you 
come to Mark. Isn't that much information? But look at verse 20. See, they mocked him. They took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. Removal and the donning of the clothing there aggravates his injuries. Come over to John, John again, John 19, John 19, 5. Jesus comes forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man, look at him. Look at him. Look what you've wanted done to him. Scourged, scourged, whipped. He's bloodied and disfigured. They struck him on the face. The crown of thorns on his head. The blood pouring. Look at the man. Behold the man! That's not enough for us, Pilate. We want him dead. Six. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. He's innocent. But go ahead and take him to crucify him. Illegal. Seven. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. No, he didn't make himself the Son of God. They should have seen him as the Son of God. They didn't, didn't want to see him. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. <gasps> he makes himself the Son of God. Pilate is coming to a greater awareness like I told you in our last lesson <laughs> Pilate sees this is no ordinary man here my wife has told me about him leave him be I see he's innocent Pilate is the more afraid. Uh-oh, the Son of God? Could it really be? This is the Son of God. Pilate's afraid. He's nervous. Convicted. Nine. And he went again into the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Ten. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Jesus answered eleven, Thou couldst have no power at all against me except it were given thee from above from my father therefore he that hath delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin Caiaphas Caiaphas was the religious leader of Israel the main one the chief Israel is to be held more responsible than Rome because Israel demanded this. Rome carried it out, but it was Israel's wish. Twelve. Oh, and from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou 
or not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Pilate is greatly struggling here. The more I hear from him, the more I think about this. The more I hear from Israel, the more I think about what they're doing. This is wrong. I have to get out of this. When apostate Israel recognizes Pilate will not put Jesus to death, then apostate Israel blackmails Pilate. These are religious leaders, remember? If you let him free, Pilate, you aren't Caesar's friend. And we will make sure that Caesar hears about this. How you let Jesus of Nazareth go free when you should have put him to death. So Pilate, he's in a conundrum. Either he does what he knows to be wrong, or he will lose his political office. Israel doesn't like me. They need one more excuse, and I'll be dragged to Rome and held accountable for displeasing them. This will be the final straw with them. John 19, 13. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought up Caesar. You had better please us or we will tattle to Caesar. When Pilate heard that, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover at about the sixth hour, 6 a.m. Roman time. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king! 15. But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. It's right here that unbelieving Israel renounces the covenants. We don't want to be God's people in the earth. We don't want this son of David reigning over us. See, interestingly, the Bible says nothing about anyone during any of these trials arguing Jesus is not David's descendant. He is not our king. Nobody had any proof that he wasn't their king. That's because he was their king. They knew the genealogical records proved Jesus is born of Mary. Mary is of the house of David. Joseph, Jesus' stepfather, he is of the house of David. Jesus is most certainly David's son. He is the rightful heir to David's throne. Nobody argued against that because they all knew it was true. They just didn't want to believe it. Eh? They had no grounds for rejecting him. The proof was everywhere. They just refused to believe that proof. All the miracles, all the preaching, all his conduct, all that showed them he's Messiah, he's Christ. And whenever he worked among them, they would do this. We don't see Messiah. Where is he? We don't hear Messiah. What's he saying? 
Be willful. Willful, intentional. Willfully ignorant. We have no king but Caesar. That heathen, Tiberius Caesar, sitting in Rome far away, that's our king. We don't want the son of David here. He is in our king. Wow, wow, wow. You mean Caesar, who is under Satan's control, you want him, and you don't want the Son of God. Wow. Look at the, look at the evidence of Israel's spiritual depravity. The professing church today actually is just as rotten. How close we are to the truth and yet so far from it at the same time. We have a completed Bible and still know the truth. is isn't God's fault. It's not God's fault here either in Matthew to John. It's Israel's fault. 16, John 19, 16, Then delivered he him, therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. Hmm. Get rid of him. Israel. Hmm. Here's an excellent commentary on the situation. Moses, 1,500 years from Calvary, before Calvary. The Lord gave him foresight here. Look into the future, Moses. Tell Israel what they'll be like 15 centuries from now. All the way to the second coming, actually. 3,500 years from now. From Moses' time. Deuteronomy 32, 18. Of the rock that beget thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Yes. Yep. Israel has forgotten the promises made to their fathers. They've forgotten the God of their fathers. They don't have His Word. They don't want His Son. No Word of God dwelling in their heart. That's why they don't want the Son of God dwelling among them in their midst. Get rid of Him. Out of the way. We have no king but Caesar. He's an innocent man. Put him to death anyway. Anyway. Acts 3. Acts 3. Acts 3.13. This is after the cross. The Apostle Peter. Acts 3.13. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate. When he was determined to let him go, Pilate wanted to release Jesus, but you demanded. Pilate put him to death. You denied your Messiah. 14. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and you killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised from the dead. Oh, whereof we are witnesses. You killed Christ, but God raised him up. Meaning, now that he's come back from the dead, you can't kill him again. And now, he's coming back. To judge you unbelievers. So you had better turn in faith to him now. Because when he comes back. All your apostate nation here. <sighs> taken in judgment off to hell in the lake of fire. Off to hell in the lake of fire. Psalm 
So here, in Luke 23, Luke 23, Barabbas is released and Jesus is condemned. Pontius Pilate releases one at the feast. By the way, in 1961, Caesarea, the Mediterranean coast there, and I don't have my map, Pilate had his headquarters there. He's in Jerusalem for now, for the Passover, but he was in Caesarea most of the time. Caesarea Maritima, not to be confused with Caesarea Philippi in the north. Anyway, in 1961, archaeologists, I'll get it, excavated what came to be known as the Pilot Stone. Pontius Pilate had headquarters here, Jerusalem's here, Judea's here. In 1961, the Pilate Stone was excavated. It was a limestone block that had an inscription, a partial inscription, that read Pontius Pilate on it. Indeed, Pontius Pilate was a historical character. He did exist. The Bible says he did. There's archaeological evidence. Yes, Pontius Pilate did live here in the first century. The Bible is reliable, trustworthy, if we want to believe it. If we say, I don't want to believe, all right, fine, then don't believe. Still true. It's not an evidence problem again. It's a heart problem. Don't want to believe. Pilate releases Barabbas and condemns Jesus. Barabbas, what is he? He's a robber, he's a murderer, seditionist, insurrectionist. He wants to overthrow the government. He takes the lives of people. He steals. But he's free. Jesus, he's innocent. He's condemned. So let me say this. One son will be liberated to live, and the other son will be condemned to die. What do I mean? Barabbas. Barabbas is Aramaic for son of the father. Barabbas is freed, not because he's innocent, but because someone else takes his place, a substitution. Barabbas represents sinful Israel, sinful man. Barabbas is in prison waiting to be condemned to death, waiting execution. The knock comes on his prison cell door. Barabbas, get out. You're freed. Why? Not because you're innocent, but because someone else will take your place. That man will die as your substitute. Who's that other man? That other son is the son of God. Barabbas, the son of the devil, child of the devil, that sinful man, in all his wretchedness. Barabbas is freed because there's a substitution to die in his place. The sinless son will take the place of the guilty son. The innocent son of God 
will be the substitute for the sinful son of Satan, man. First Peter. First Peter. First Peter. Three. Eighteen. For Christ also. First Peter three eighteen. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. The just for the unjust. The just, the righteous man, dying in the place of the unrighteous man, the unjust man. Us. And now Barabbas is expected to live in light of that freedom. Why are you free, Barabbas? Not because of what you've done, but because of what someone else did, taking your place. Israel, she's freed through the blood of Christ. Freed from sin, freed from Satan. Now walk in newness of life. Same with us. The church, the body of Christ. Someone took our place, the Lord Jesus Christ. Where did he take our place? There. That's where he took Israel's place. Sinners have a Savior. They don't deserve it, but they have one. Trust the Savior, my friend. The Lord Jesus Christ who died for your sins, who was buried, and who was raised again. That once you trust Him, and Him alone, you can then walk in newness of life, dead to sin, alive unto God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Luke 23, verse 24. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. That's what Israel wants. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast in a prison whom they had desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will. And here comes the crucifixion now. Okay. Right where I wanted to stop. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the finished cross work of Christ, Jesus, your Son, your only begotten Son. May we trust him and him alone as our personal Savior and pass from death to life in Christ's name.